crafty friends. Today we are going to be creating this very sweet vintage inspired envelope greeting card. I'm using pattern papers from Prima. This is a combination of fruit paradise as well as apricot honey. I've got some trims here from Really Reasonable Ribbon and a quick tutorial on how I created that sweet little checkered envelope with the envelope punch board. So stick with me and we'll make this together. I'm using my envelope punch board to create the envelope for the front of the card and I want to make an envelope that will fit a card size two and a half by three and a half inches. This guide tells me to cut my pattern paper at five and a half by five and a half and then score at two and three eighths. So here's my pattern paper from Prima and I have already cut it five and a half by five and a half and it's pretty self-explanatory. I think I've made envelopes in videos a fair few times so I'm not gonna do the whole thing but you can just see that you want to follow the first measurement and then line this indicator up with your crease and then follow that around and then you'll want to use the um, alternate side to create a nice rounded corner for the envelope I'm working with today when it was folded it had some um, more vintagey background showing and I wanted mine to be more um, classic pink and white so I elected to take the scrap piece and just cover that flap and then once I adhered it I just clipped around so that it would have that same pattern paper inside the flap that will show when it's closed. So that is going to be my envelope for the front of my car. Six by six inches here. I finished the inside already as I do with the pattern paper. And I'm going to start layering on, beginning with the card stock now. This is a pretty soft, great card stock and I've cut that so that I'll have my border and the back has the double-sided foam adhesive so that I will have lots of nice dimensions. So I'm just going to begin with the cardstock and get that centered right in the middle and come in with my pattern paper. So like I said, I'm using Prima and it's a combination of fruit paradise and apricot honey. And I just picked the patterns from each of those collections that I liked um, with the main pattern being that beautiful plaid. Here is some uh, pink brickwork um, and it's quite grunge. Here's a doily that I have die cut. This is from the Cherry Lynn Design dies and this is the English Tea Party doily. I want that closer to the top because of the size of the envelope. I want to make sure that there's room so that you can see the detail on the top. So here's the envelope I prepared in advance. And as I showed you, I finished the top with the coordinating paper so that it would look nice throughout. And then I put some double-sided foam on the back of that as well because I want to continue to build those layers. So what I wanna do is bring in the first uh, portion that's going to be inside the envelope. And this is just a piece of the three by four journal cards of that Fruit Paradise. And I picked this up from Funky Junky Boutique, so I'll leave a link in the description. You can find that below. I'm only gonna put the double-sided tape on the bottom so that the envelope will be not quite so bulky. And then I've put my spacer at the top where it pokes out from the top. Um, and I'm just going to kind of offset that at an angle so that it will look like it's just casually tucked in there. Here's a piece of that cut apart sheet. I clipped it out and added an eyelet that coordinates a little bit of wax twine and I put these up on the dots um, or the foam spacers so that I can add even more dimension. And I'm being very careful uh, to add that and not cover too much of those cherries because that was really uh, most of the inspiration was that it was uh, that pink coordinated with the plaid. So now that I've got that 
um, loaded in the envelope. I'm going to go ahead and close the front. I just put a little double-sided adhesive where it will be covered with the flap and now you can see that it doesn't cover too much of that image so you get that nice cute cherry tag. Before I add it to the card base. I want to bring in a couple of texture layers and this is some crocheted lace from Really Reasonable Ribbon. I would normally not trust the double-sided adhesive tape to hold this down but because I'm adding another layer on top that wraps around then I'm pretty sure that that is just going to be fine and I don't want it right at the bottom because I want to have a little bit of that checkered detail. I'm just going to press this in place and top it with the wrinkle ribbon. This is the sweet uh, pink wrinkle ribbon and I'm using that for my bow as well. But for here, I'm just going to cover the top of that crocheted ribbon and the adhesive that's sticking it down. And then I'll wrap that end around and attach it on the back so there won't be any raw edges showing or parts where it could come loose. Here's just that double-sided foam tape. I like this as well because it helps this layer to be extra sturdy. And I'm just going to add that here. I'm not going to put this portion at an angle because there isn't a whole lot of room left for all of the embellishments that I want to add. So what I've got here is a small flower arrangement. There's a couple of roses here and some chrysanthemums and rosebuds. A little bit of netting uh, just to fill in and give it kind of an organic look. Some twine bows and some die cut foliage. This is in a really light sagey color so that it will coordinate really well. And I'm just going to add that here at the bottom and press that into place. I've got a sweet little birdcage charm and I have tied this with a little bit of string. I want to hold it in place so that I know where it's going to fall before I glue the top down. And then just stick that string in there. And of course you should never stick your fingers in hot glue like I always seem to do, but um, you should be more careful than I am. I'll just clip that tail now um, before I add the flowers so that I don't have to work around the bulk of them. Here is a couple more flowers. This is a cherry blossom from Really Reasonable Ribbon and I switched out the center uh, it was originally yellow, which I guess would look like the original flower, but for my arrangement here, I didn't want that to be a distraction, so I switched it out. And these are new um, stamens from her shop. They're the flat um, mini. I've also got a little bit of additional netting here, another bow, and some more leaves. And I want to put this in... Um, right here but first I'll have to secure this a little bow this like I said was tied from that pink wrinkle ribbon and it's just kind of going to um, poke out from underneath those flowers so I'll add that first so I know I've got room for it and then I'll just cover that glue end with my flower arrangement. I've pulled a couple buttons here from my vintage button jar. I'm gonna put three of them down here on this ribbon and then this extra special one is very vintagey and has the original uh, string pulled through it so I love that detail and I'm going to just top those cherries with it on that little tag. I think that looks extra sweet right there. So I'll just glue all these little buttons on. So that is all for my vintage envelope greeting card. You will find links in the description below for Funky Junkie Boutique and Really Reasonable Ribbon, as well as links to all our social media handles. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave me a comment and give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye!